دي تو نيو نيو سو اشعري از ما توريد از بيسكلي سين او الله يو سيد يو هاف ا هاند با نو از نو بيس فيتن فور يو وي غانا ساي سام في غوس باور با اوكي با يو سين بيكوز اف يو سي الله هاز ا هاند هيز لايك اور هاند با اف يو سي باور با وي هاف باور تو وي با يو غانا ساي يو باور الله باور نو لايك يو باور ان وي سي الله هاز ا هاند نو لايك اور هاند Yeah, I understand. Understand. Yeah, yeah. So the question you ask yourself: So when Allah said He has a hand, was He speaking the truth, or was He lying? I mean, can, can, their argument would be: their argument would be, yeah. if He says hand, He could mean you are you are affirming hand, but a metaphorical hand. You're not affirming a a a. Again, why? Okay. So what is the other meaning? What is because metaphorical mean? That's not the meaning of it. Yeah. So what is the meaning of it? So was Allah not able to express it with the other wording? In, Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, so, so the, Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned a powerful point and Gazish Jahmiyyah who tried to correct Allah. He said, okay, so Allah was not able to express, so Allah confused us now. Because it's because of confusion according to them, but it's not confusion at all. Mm. Them, because of what? Because of the poison of Greek philosophy. Because the Greek philosophy, the 10 points of Aristotle, that if you say the, the, the amount and the, the, the kaifiyah and the had and all of that, this applies to creation. Okay, if something moves, it has, has to have a body. All of this is from Aristotle. That's why Maturidis, Ash'aris, Jamia, followers of Aristotle. They're not, for, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna say that to you, of course. They, they're, gonna, but they're not from the Prophet and Messengers. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was reciting this ayah, the Sahaba, remember we were talking about Akhir Isa ayah, we're talking about the most important thing, knowing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah mentioned this attribute about himself for us to know about him, okay? However, Allah did it in a way cause confusion according to them. But we say no. You see, also, let me ask you, what is the origin of the language? Is it metaphorical or is it the apparent meaning? The origin of any language? Is it, I say apparent meaning. The yeah. apparent meaning, yeah. If I say Isa, I'm going home. What are you going to understand? I'm going home. Yeah. So you see, and that's why, so, so now, when he say it's metaphorical, We said to you, okay, where did you get that from? For us, never says metaphorical. Our book can never say it's metaphorical. You know? But would there be anything, would you say there's anything in the Quran that could be classed as metaphorical? Some scholars mentioned there is some metaphorical, but not in, in Ghaibiyat. Okay. Allah, but me, I'm an opinion of there is no metaphorical in the Quran at all. At no. all. No, not at all. You know, not at all. Because metaphorical mean, like for example, if I said to you, Isa, you're a lion. They say he's not really a lion. Ibn Uthami said, okay, you saying that the only li name lion was used is for the animal. Show me where the Arab came all together. And they said, the only time we use a lion for in reality is for the animal. Where do you get that from? That. You can't do that. Yeah. So you're making up. So it's not metaphorical when the Arab they say this man is an asset. What it, asset, what it means, it means that it's not metaphorical. It's a powerful man, strong man. They apply for a man, animal too. You understand? So, so people who believe that Allah's, uh, like the hand, for example, is metaphorical. Would you say they fall outside of, outside of Islamic? No, I'm not, not going to uh, make fear on them, but I say they are misguided. They are misguided, why? Because they try to, uh, it depends. Like for example, Jahmiya are kuffar, it's believers. But as my to read this, scholars don't make fear on them, because they have this, uh, uh, if the hujjah be established upon him, and he still insists, this man is going against the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets the way of the Salaf. You know, but the point here is that We go back to is in the Quran when Allah said He has a hand the way of His Majesty, and He said it doesn't mean that. So who is so so was Allah speaking the truth when He said He has a hand? Okay, another question. If and before sorry, yeah. before you ask me another question, Allah said about Iblis, ما منعك أن تسجد لما خلقت بيدي ما منعك أن تسجد لما خلقت بيدي What is preventing you? So, so Allah addressing Iblis, what is preventing you to prostrate the one that I've created with my hands? So Allah is mentioning something special about Adam, which is why you have not prostrate to the one which I've created with my hand, yeah. with my hand. Yeah. So the khasisa here, oh, uh, salam uh, alaykum, uh, 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 salam alaykum. You going? I'm here. I will speak later, inshallah. Okay. The, uh, what was I going to say? There is khasisa. There is something special about it. So what is something special about it? Is that Allah created him with his hand. 
Now they say no, hand doesn't mean hand, means a power. <laughs> means a power, correct? But we say, okay, Allah created Iblis with his power too. Correct? So Iblis could have said, oh Allah, but you create me with your power too. So a hand means with his hand, the way of his majesty. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, carry on. Okay, and another point. If, if they say Allah is above the throne. Allah is above the throne, yes. Th their argument, logically, yeah. is yeah. that gives Allah a size, dimensions, direction. These okay, all this term is yeah. ambiguous. What do you mean size? What do you mean direction? So essentially this, this the, ambiguous. Argument, the argument is if, it's, if he's above the throne, yeah. he's not below the throne. Yeah. His, the size of Allah does not reach below the throne, so it puts him above the throne. Okay. So his size is fit to the, the space above the throne. Okay, so so it's, it's not inside the, the throne. Okay, watch this, yeah? The book is above the, the, the cup. Which yeah. one is bigger, the book or the cup? Yeah. Let's see. And this is an example, I should even use that, but I'm just showing you, yeah. even in reality, okay? The sky is above the earth. Which one is bigger, the sky or the earth? The sky. Okay, so my, my point here is, so in the question, your question, or the Ash'aris, they are Mushabbiha. They resemble Allah to his creation. Because where they, where they get this poison mentality from? From that, if Allah is above this, it has to be size, it has to be this, it has to be that. Why don't you keep quiet? I'm not saying you're here. Them. Why don't you say Allah is above the creation? Allah is above the creation. Because why? Is Allah from the unseen or from the seen? From the unseen. Mm -hmm. And the arsh, is it from the unseen or from the seen? From the unseen. Do you know the arsh size? We don't know the arsh size. Okay, but yes, we say, when we say Allah has a limit, Allah has no limit in his power. Allah, all powerful, all knowledge. Mean Allah is separate from his creation. He's not mixed with his creation. And no one knows Allah's limit, his essence. No one except himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. You understand? Because uh, uh, the, uh, now, we, so, so the, again, you're proving my point. My point here is that when they come with this ideology of, if you say Allah is above the arsh, you're saying this and that, where do they get that from? Oh, this, these implications, what they get from? Is in the Quran? Or oh, they resemble, they look at the creation and they say, if this will happen to the creation, will happen to Allah. That's what Ibn Taymiyyah said, Ash'aris, Maturinis, are Mushabbiha. So because of their aql, instead of cleaning their aql and their fitrah, that Allah, there's not very like unto him, they resemble us creation and they say, if we affirm Allah is above the arsh, therefore it has to be this way, that way. No. They apply a ruling of the creation to the creator. Yeah. You understand? Well, the, the, the confusing thing is that the school that I, I'm learning at, yeah. they say they, they're following the teachings of Imam al-Shafi. No, that's a lie. Imam al-Qurtubi, in his tafsir, I have tafsir al-Qurtubi. May Allah have mercy upon him. He said, Allah above the arsh. They said, Allah above the arsh. He said, he said, the mutakallimun, they say, is metaphorical. I'm, I'm just rephrasing uh, 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 it. He said, the way of the Salaf, he's above the arsh in reality. And that's the way of the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. And the trustworthy ones narrated it from us. Hey, Shamsi. I'm speaking. Yeah, I'm you speaking have... to him. No. I know, okay. I know you're speaking to yeah, him. Yeah, don't speak to me. But you, but yeah. you have Darian? greater issues to deal with. No, the greater issue is that you worship a baby inside a woman's private part. No. That's the greater yeah. issue. Right, so, Carry on. So, so what, what I want to, like, final question is if, like. But okay. before that, yeah. so Qurtubi said that clearly, the way of the Salaf. Oh, yeah. So they say they follow Shafi and Fiqh. That's why when you ask Ash'ari, Maturidi, or those who claim for Ash'ari, they say, Ana Hanafi al fiqh, Ash'ari al aqidah. But why you don't say, I'm Hanafi al aqidah too? Huh? No, no, I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. Where are you getting angry? Come down. I'm talking to him, man. I'll talk to him. I'm holding your mouth. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying to you, that why don't you say, Hanafi al aqidah? Because Abu Hanifa from the Salaf, they lie and guess him. So what I'm saying to you, they are not the way of the Shafi'i Abu Hanifa. May Allah have mercy upon them. Yes. Okay, for someone who, who's learning confused, yeah, and let's say it, it still confuses me. Yeah. After this conversation, I'm still confused. Why is confused? Okay. Why don't you suffice with the Quran and the Sunnah? No, so, so I mean, you do, but they, they, can, they can give you an explanation that, you know what, this is, it is, it is what it says it is. But it, no, we it, ask, so Isa, to ask them, did Abu Bakr say that? Did Omar say that? Did Uthman say that? Did Ali say that? Okay, are you more eager to learn about Allah and to, 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 to make sure Allah is holy and to not attribute something wrongly to Allah than Abu Bakr and Umar. So why Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Sahaba when they were teaching their students and the people in the masjid who said, them, Lord, Allah is not like this or that way. Why? 
because the aql is salim, but because they've been corrupted with the Greek philosophy, you know, that's why who came with metaphorical? The first person to come with, it was the Phil of Alexandria. He was a, a, a rabbi, philosopher, okay, he exists like uh, 200 years before, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, Christ, as they say, and he studied Greek philosophy, and he saw that Greek philosophy crush with the Torah, the apparent meaning of the Torah about God. So he started explaining the Torah in a different way, you understand, about God. So this is not from the Quran and the Sunnah. Uh, anyway, I was speaking to Brother Isa, but... Isa, wallahi, okay, sorry, man. This Indian dog, okay, I got from India, I don't know what happened to him. I left him home, but he came back. He came here. I'm not disrespecting India, but I'm saying it's this dog. Because uh, there's Indian Muslims out there, even non-Muslims. I don't know, this guy is an Indian dog. I got from India. I will speak to anyone about him, it's a waste of time. So what I was saying, okay, to go back to the main point, let us suffice with the Quran and the Sunnah. Sahaba, they had jealousy about the deen. The Sahaba, they could have explained, okay, how, they never said, when you say Allah is above the Arsh, don't think Allah is in the space. Because you know the terms that you use, direction. Direction is ambiguous. What do you mean by that? Because the hadith of Algeria, when the woman, when the Prophet Muhammad asked the woman, where is Allah? She says, Allah above. That's direction. But if you mean direction, Allah is in a space created and surrounded by space and all of that, we reject that. But if you say that Allah is above creation, then we don't reject that. That's why space, place, all is ambiguous. That's why we don't reject it straight away. Because why? Okay. Even though Imam Ahmed way said, watch this. Before Allah created the creation, there was Allah. Okay? You with me? Yeah? So when Allah created the creation, either he created the creation outside him or the creation within himself. And that's mean he created impurity within himself. Or he created the creation, then he dived into the creation, mixed with impurity. Which one goes in line with the fitland and the common sense? I, I say logically outside himself. That's, that's, yeah. If it's outside, so it's outside the creation. So what happened to these people? They rejected, they even negate that Allah is outside or inside. And Ibn Qayyim said, in the reality, they worship a non-existent thing. So what if someone would say, let's say they're confused from it, they said, I don't want to think about it, I don't want to understand whether Allah has a hand or doesn't have a hand or whatever, I just want to focus on other stuff. So why are you in the Quran? But just on that specific, like, no, I, no, I, no, I, don't say that. there used to be a problem with, uh, do you know, like I used to be confused with, do you know the free will? Uh, let's move away because they're shouting, yeah. let's, alhamdulillah, brothers, may Allah reward them, they're interrupting, they're, they're occupying him, come, move aside.